She gave me life, showed me what was right, taught me not to fight the battles that weren't worth the fight. Right from the start, she held me close, and as time went on, she was strong enough to let. Greetings, everyone. My name is Angela Martin, and it's a pleasure to be here to share with you an on Wednesday night Bible study. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for this opportunity. Father, opportunity again that we can come before you, before your kingdom, to study your word, to have a little knowledge of what it is that you want for us as your children, that we will be able to grow more in you. Father, I pray the Lord that with this opportunity that you've given to me, that I will be able to do what I have to do with clarity, and most of all with your Holy Spirit. Take full control to this evening. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. May your will be done. Jesus, and greetings again, wonderful people. Greetings to God, who is the head of the day. To my pastor, Michael Backus, and Patricia Backus, Jesse Prasad, all the ministers, and the wonderful saints of the gospel. I just want to say greetings to you as we come this day in our Wednesday Bible study. I pray that. Ever have been prepared, it will be a blessing to you. So today, what um our Bible study will be coming from St. John 19, verse 26 and 27. It said, Be uh, woman, behold your son. Son, behold thy mother. And this is the third scene of Jesus words that were spoken, his final words on the cross. So as I was thinking about these words, and for a moment, and hearing them repeated, I, as I look back, and I said, Jesus called his mother woman. Yes, he addressed his mother as woman. For us in the Caribbean, this this would sound very rude. But apparently in that time, in Jesus' time, it was okay to address um, women as women or their women. So in the so this is was the Jewish culture and was familiar with Jesus at that time. But I always wonder why Jesus used it on the, the day on the cross? Why would he take that time to say woman instead of mother? So as I thought about it some more, and um, I we look at this scene, and, and we know that that day on the cross, Jesus looked up, and he saw John, which was the disciple that he loved, and three other women. And as they were taken, uh, Jesus was taking his final breath. 
and as a son, he was leaving the last command for his mother and for John. Jesus um, delinquished his role as her son and her role as his mother. Why would you say that, Andrew? Well, because in my opinion, the last words that any person say is the last, is the thing that remained with you. And he didn't say mother, because I believe that if he had said, John, please take care of my mother, it would have been like it was still his mother. It will still hold a point to Jesus. But when he say, woman, behold thy son, it was given Mary the opportunity to love John with the freedom to be, um, for him to be her son. And when he said, son, Behold thy mother. It was given John the freedom to take Mary as his mother. It would not have been a question of it is still Jesus' mother. But to know that Jesus had the ability to do it with such grace and still was able to love and accept Mary as his mother, knowing that he had the freedom to do that. And, and as I began to look further at the, um, the relationship that was there at the, at the cross at that time, we had three women and one person. And I thought of the whole picture and to, to give us the events that took place, the request from Jesus, his dying savior, his last words, a family remain of what was happening at the cross that day. It is also known that Mary is also John's aunt. Verse 25 reads, now they stood by the cross, of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. So as you see, there were, there were people, there were women, but there were relationships, there were family. It was a family dynamics that were going on there. And John was asked to take his aunt to be his mother. And I thought of that. And um, I thought of even Mary, um, which was Jesus, um, which was Mary's sister. She was accompanying her sister to her nephew's death. And then you had Cleophius, which was also one, which was John's, which was also the mother of James and Zebedee, so they were, they were all there together. And we go back to John 19, 25, um, Jesus, our mother, is, she is mentioned as Jesus' sister, Mary's sister. And that is in Matthew 27, 56, the mother of Zebedee's sons. And you can find it also in Mark 15, 40. And her name was given at Siloam. So here you were able to, to have a little more um, thing that were happening. And Siloam was the sister of Mary. So that means that he was given permission for his nephew, for his cousin, to take care of his aunt. And then we had Mary, which we know was, she was also James and Joseph, the younger Joseph. And then Mary Magdalene, you know that she were, she was one, she was the one that was um, demons 
process and she and so which means that these women were following Jesus they were faithful to the end faithful as a disciple faithful as the one that were accompanying his sister and they were accompanying his her nephew and we see the we really see the relationship and a family dynamic that were happening right there at the cross. And as we go back to Jesus, and as a mother, I thought about the task that Jesus had as a son. Jesus was Mary's firstborn son. He was in many ways the person that was responsible for the welfare of his of his older mother. Because at that time, we know that Joseph had already died. So Jesus took what his, his dedication seriously. He gave it to the one person who showed commitment and dedication to him and all the other women that stood at the cross. We know that all the others had disappeared. There were no one else there. But John was there with his family. He was there with Jesus to the end. And Jesus saw, when he looked and he saw the hurt, when he saw the, the despair on his mom's, um, I can believe as a mother what was going on, he gave that task to some person that he knew would be committed. And as the word of God did not just leave it there, it also said that this disciple took Mary and she was at his house until. So which means that this relationship, what will happen that day of the cross, knowing that he was given his, his mother to someone that would be able to take care of him was something that we know that was more miraculous. Jesus loved family, and he dedicated that to the end. So Jesus demonstrated that the family role and responsibility, it does not stop. We have a responsibility to honor and provide for the welfare of our family. Even John played a very important role as a friend, a faithful disciple and a family member. So let us be careful of what type of role we play as a family member. Let us share and see the love that we are demonstrating as a member, even to the body of Christ. What type of sister are we? What type of brother are we? What type of sons and daughters are we in the body of Christ? What type of, are we, he said this, you know, are we being the type of sisters and brothers gathering together like God will want us to be? Or are we just in competition with each other? This is not what God wants. He wants to know that we would establish relationship with our brethren. It's important that we demonstrate the love that God has for us. This race that we are running, or this walk that we are walking, it is not for us, or for the, it's the word of God said, not even for the ones that are strong, but it's for those that endure to the end. We have to carry each other. We have to be able to love each other. And we at Full Gospel, we have been having messages about love for the past couple of months. And I keep repeating, which means that we have to be careful that we are hearing the word of God. And because that it is not yet being done, we keep having this all the time. We keep knowing that we have to keep love, the love that we have for each other. So brothers and sisters, let us 
be very serious. We are not loving each other the way that we're supposed to be. So we don't want to be in competition with each other. Let us love each other with the love that Jesus had demonstrated when he said, he said, I pray that they will love each other the way that we love each other. And that was a conversation between him and his father because he wanted to make sure that his, that his father know and understand that he wanted the, um, the people here on this earth to love the way that they love. And now not only the father, but the way that he loved his mother, making sure that she was taken care of. So brothers and sisters, let us not use this word love. Or let us not just hear about this word love. But let us try to do it with a togetherness. Let us try to work together. Let us try to demonstrate that the family and every relationship, every role that has to be played as a family is important. So God bless you. And I pray that one thing that you take away from what has been said today is that Jesus wants us to love each other. The son of God that gave his life for us, he made us to love each other the way that he loved his mother and the way that he loved his father. God bless you. And I pray to God as we listen to the word of God, and as you remind us again about the love that we are supposed to demonstrate for each other, I pray to God that one more time that we were able to love, that we were able to be the example even in our family, that whatsoever role in our family, whether it's a son, whether it's a daughter, a husband, a wife, that we will love our family the way God wants to love. So God, I pray right now even as these words were taught someone saw, that they were even as considered, even the things that they may be doing in their family. I pray God that it caused them, dear Lord, to think, to think again about what they need to do to show love to the family members and also to the body of Christ. So Father, we pray right now and we ask these things in all their name and in thy son's name. As we play this song for you, please enjoy the song between a mother and her sons. God bless you. Thanks. She used to watch him from the window pane. He'd pretend to ride away, right off into that setting sun. He always loved to play make believe in a backyard western movie scene. He'd say, Mama, watch me and my horses run. By the time he could drive his daddy's old truck He couldn't get gone fast enough He was red tail lights and a pedal to the floor She always tried to steer him right But he'd sneak in around midnight And she wouldn't sleep till he walked back through the door But when she lays her head down He's all she prays about That no matter how far he may roam That he'll stay strong and stay wild And know he's his mama's child And that he can always find his way back home And she'll worry like she does Cause there's no kind of love like the one between mothers and sons And I 
How she's always waiting on Sunday night For the phone to ring and the clothes to dry And the minutes fly by when he finally calls She does her best to play it tough Fights back tears when they hang up Yeah, just yesterday he lived right down the hall But when she lays her head down He's all she prays about That no matter how far he may roam He'll stay strong and stay wild And know he's his mama's child and that he can always find his way back home but She'll worry like she does Cause there's no kind of love like the one Between mothers and sons but She's gonna worry like she does Cause there's no kind of love Like the one between mothers Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, press down, shake together, and running over. So you know what time it is? It's time for you to give. And in order to do that, all you need to do is go to our church's website. Go to www.fgany.org. That's www.fgany.org. And when you get to the webpage, all you have to do is click give and it will open up where you'd be able to pay your tithe, your offering, or give to any special ministry that you would normally give to. So don't forget, go to www.fgany.org and give. 